I am Deborah Jason. I am the author of Millionaire Marketing on a Shoestring Budget and DebraJason.com. And the Marketing Blab with Deborah is a weekly blab that I've been doing on Fridays. And those of you who know me know that when I speak about marketing, I'm talking about the art of engaging. To me, marketing is about building relationships and about nurturing those relationships. It's about connecting with people. And that's one of the reasons that I'm really enjoying Blab because I get to connect with people face to face. For example, one of our guests who is here today is Robert Nissenbaum, who I've known for some time. His company is Tactical Social Media, but yet we've never met face to face. So um, hopefully I'll bring you on board, uh, Robert, and you can ask a question or we can just connect. But Blab is amazing for that. Oh, Bill, thank you for that comment. Bill was saying, <laughs> this is a great book. Um, and if you haven't read it, you should soon. For those of you who are listening who are in Colorado, if you're in the Boulder area, I'll be doing a book signing tomorrow at Barnes & Noble in Boulder. For those of you who want to write a book, I strongly recommend it. It's really um, a labor of love, but it's very worth doing. So we have Win. Win. it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, right now, I'm not going to open the seats. I'm waiting for my guests to arrive. So for right now, I'm waiting for Kim Garst to get on the air. And um, after Kim and I have chatted for a bit, then I will bring on some of you to ask questions. So I am recording this. There will be a replay, so you'll be able to watch it later, or if you have to jump off early, that's okay. The replay will be available on Blab when you go back to my Blab site, which is blabwithdebra.com. Then you can click the replay button, and you'll see the replays that are posted there. So, hi, Joyce. Nice to see you here. Oh, and we've got, it looks like Aaron is here. Um, everyone, we've got a new person, Jonas. Oh, Jonas Briggs is here. And Kinney. Kinney, where are you from? I like that name. Don't forget, everyone. Tell a little bird. Okay, when you tweet that out, we'll get some more people here. We'll get some more engagement and we'll get more connecting. Bowling Green, okay, that's where Kenny is from, Bowling Green. And Wynn is here from Aspen, Colorado. We have a few Colorado peeps. <laughs> Thank you, Valerie. Valerie said she just read five chapters of my book last night. She jumped right in. Yesterday I spoke to a group of uh, women who are social media gals here in Colorado. So quite a few of them picked up the book. Thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Bill says K-Y or O-H, Kenny. So are you Kentucky or Ohio? Where is Bowling Green? I think Bowling Green is Kentucky, isn't it? But maybe Bill is saying there's more than one. So uh, we're waiting on our guest. Kim is really busy right now. She is um, putting together an event that's happening in about a week from now. So here she comes. I see her jumping on board. Hey there. So everybody, I have to tell you, I am really excited about having this guest. Um, hopefully she's coming through now. Kim, if you're not using Chrome, you might want to try that. But I see you're, you're there, slowly but surely. She said she's having trouble getting in. So, Kim, sometimes it takes going out and coming back. Sometimes it means you should be using Chrome. Um, so give that a shot and see if that works. And you can always close out and come back. So we're getting closer. She is using Chrome. Somebody told me the other day they had better luck with Firefox. I have not. So... Um, and Erin said she's had issues with Chrome. 
Joyce, for those of you who are jumping on board for a seat, we're going to hold off until my guest is here. So um, for right now, the person that I'm going to loud in will be Kim once she gets here. After Kim and I have had a chance to talk, then I will open up those seats and you can jump on the blab wagon and ask a question. So technology has a way of doing its own thing. Um, you feel, Bill, I see you're using Chrome. Ah, you know what? Someone's saying they're using the app. So Marissa, you're on your phone. I tried that the other day. Here's Kim. Let's see. Hopefully we'll keep our fingers crossed. Okay. What I decided to do is just come in with my phone. So well, I was talking about that. <laughs> I was I like, okay, this isn't I working. My phone. <laughs> I, had, I actually had trouble with this uh, the other day. I don't know why. Well, but you know, it's still, it's still in beta. So, you know, there are some things I think that just get a little wonky, and some days it works better than others. But I want to sort of step back and give a little bit of an intro because I am so excited to have Kim here today. Just a little history for everybody that's tuned in. Uh, you know, I talk about building relationships and about connecting, and Kim and I have never met face-to-face. -face. We know each other on Facebook, on Twitter. We have supported each other on our book launches. So uh, my heart is pounding because I'm just so thrilled <laughs> to introduce Kim Garst. Kim is the author of Will the Real You Please Stand Up? And she has agreed to join me here today. So thanks for being here. And I hope it goes smoothly on your phone. I am going to, um, me too. So I'm going to put my mic on. I know okay. you guys can probably hear me, but maybe the sound quality will be a little better if I do this. So bear with me while I do this. I wasn't intending to use my phone. So I'm kind of, <laughs> but that's okay. We'll get this. That's okay. <laughs> You guys are getting to see my messy office to boot, so. Well, no problems. We're just excited that you're here. So, are you holding your right. phone? How's that? A little better, maybe? That's great. Perfect. Okay. You're good to go. So, thank you for being here. You're calling in from Florida. I am. Um, I'm, in, I'm here in Colorado. We have people that are here from all over the place, which is one of the awesome things about um, blabbing. I see we've got Darren Bentley here, who you know, and I think we've got a bunch of social media peeps um, from Colorado that are here. But let's first talk about Kim. Kim, you have been in your business for more than 20 years. I've had mine for more than 26. And you recently were named one of the top 25 social media keynote speakers that people need to know. Um, Which is with, exciting. <laughs> yes, I'd say that's very exciting. And you were in some great company as well. And you're also known as a leading authority in social selling. So would you take a moment and tell us, share with us what social selling means to you? Uh-oh, she froze up on me. <laughs> so when she comes back... <laughs> Hopefully, sorry folks, but as I said, Blab is in the beta phase and Kim is calling in on her phone. So let's try it once again. The Hi best there. about your phone <laughs> is when somebody calls you, it throws you off. Oh, it goes off. <laughs> well, and Darren is in here going, this is what makes it so much fun. So thank you, Darren, for your sense of humor. But Kim, I was saying to you, tell us what social selling means to you. Um, basically, um, basically, basically, leveraging, leveraging the power of relationships on social media, 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 media uh, to uh, make more sales. More sales. I, mean, I mean, that's, that's a pretty, pretty, simple, pretty simple, simplified version of what social selling is. You know, I think a lot of people uh, look at social, social selling as a... Um, you know, pure sales function in the sense of, um, you know, like a sales force thing. Um, in my opinion, social selling is, um, is all, it doesn't matter what size business you have. You don't have to be a big brand. Um, you can be a small business owner. You can be a solopreneur. Um, you know, any of that um, works. 
uh, you just have to be committed to the relationship building so that you can ultimately uh, build that know, like, and trust factor so people will buy from you. Well, you know, a lot of times I speak about that KLT factor, the know, the like, and the trust. And you have built a following, let's see, what do you have, like 400,000 Twitter followers and probably 200,000 on your fan page. How did, how long did it take to that, till that happened and how did you make that happen? Well, I distinctly remember Twitter in particular. I started on Facebook like most people do. You know, most people do start, I think, on um, on Facebook. And and I think a lot of us are, are more familiar or, and we're more comfortable over on Facebook, too. And um, lots of times I think we get stuck there because we don't want that change and we don't want that learning curve, et cetera. That was kind of my uh, thing when I first started over on Twitter is I didn't get it. I'm like, why would you like, why do they, you know, it moves so fast. That was way back when, you know, the, the feed would refresh and you couldn't even read a tweet before it was gone. You were chasing it up the, up the feed, you know, trying to, <laughs> trying to read it. Um, and so, yeah, I guess I wasn't a fast reader at that point in time. You learn, you get better at this multitasking stuff, honestly, um, and the speed factor. But um, I, it was December the 23rd, 2010, and I'd had a Twitter account for, I don't know, some, I, probably over a year at that point. But again, I didn't get it. I was like, I, I don't understand this stuff. So I... Um, I said, you know, that was when I made the decision I was going to take my so my business in the social media direction, and I'm like, I got to figure this stuff out. If I'm going to do this for other people, I have to know how to do it myself. So I just dug in. Um, you know, I I took every Twitter course I could find, uh, read everything I could get my hands on, um, reverse engineered what a lot of what I considered successful Twitter uh, folks at the time were doing. Um, tried to figure out how it made sense for my business and I developed my own system for it and have, you know, consistently had, um, you know, a, yeah, you know, not only do I, do I have a content strategy there, but I also have, you know, a targeted, um, um, a growth, um, strategy as well so that I can continue to grow, you know, and, and connect with people that are interested in my products or services. You know, I'm not about just, I mean, it's, it sounds ridiculous to say this. I'm not just about the numbers when you have almost 400,000 followers, but I don't, I want those people to be, you know, business owners, you know, people that I can serve. I'm not about, you know, I'm always about the quality versus the quantity. So um, anybody that's, you know, not getting Twitter yet um, or any of the social platforms, really, it's all about the, um, the quality of the people who follow you versus. I'm so glad you said that because, you know, a lot of people are out there chasing numbers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think and you can probably speak to this, you know, with 400,000 followers, it's a little hard to really build a, a personal connection with all of those people. Well, it's funny you say that because until um, I think I had I had hit 350,000 followers, which hasn't been that long ago, a few months ago, actually. And, you know, my business partner has been forever saying, Kim, you've got to stop this. It's killing you. Um, you know, I would thank everybody who retweeted me. And he finally sat me down and he said, you're retweeted on average every 45 seconds. How can you keep up with that? So I, I really got to a point where I had to say, okay, instead of, you know, um, doing that, I've really worked on, you know, building um, deeper relationships with people, um, you know, trying to communicate with, um, you know, people who that I routinely see versus, mm -hmm. you know, just everybody. Uh oh, you froze up on me. We'll have to see if um, I don't hear you or see. Well, I do see you, but I don't hear you. Here she goes again. Maybe her phone ring. Remember, Kim is calling us from her phone. And so if somebody tries to call her, she gets shut out. So she'll have to come back and refresh. Um, but thank you all for being here. And for those of you who are new to, to uh, Blab, if you see the little hands at the bottom of the screen, 
when you click on that, that's your way to give applause and show appreciation. Um, so <laughs> those are called props here on Blab. And then don't forget to uh, tell the little bird and share the word that you're on. And here she is. She's back. <laughs> okay, I fixed it too. I turned my airplane mode on. We are not getting interrupted yet. <laughs> Well, I thought maybe you got another phone call, so that would make it tricky. And yes, my, my husband is trying to call me, so I hope it's not an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone just said, Simon said, if you want, you can turn off the cell feature on your phone and only access Wi-Fi. Yes, that's what I did. Um, I do that on Periscope, incidentally. And, you know, I, I was in such a rush to make this work because I knew I was I couldn't get on through my web browser that I just popped on my phone thinking, well, this would be my, my backup plan. Um, yet I didn't think my backup plan through exactly. So sorry about that guys. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us. Well, that's okay. You were talking about, you know, having all those friends and followers, you know, that you have to sort of step back and say, okay, you know, I can't thank every single person when I have 350,000 people retweeting every 45 seconds. Um, someone said to me the other day, one of the things that they appreciate is when they like something on LinkedIn of mine or on, uh, retweet it on Twitter or like it on Facebook. I always say, thank you. Yes. And it's my response was, well, <laughs> and you know, people, um, that's what I built my whole Twitter profile around. So I, I stopped by literally kicking and screaming. I'm like, this is what I've always done. And I, I don't want to be that person who doesn't engage with people. So um, I'm really, you know, known for actually talking to people on Twitter. Talk to people. <laughs> and it's so important to me that I don't want to be that person, you know, that says, well, you know, I'm too big or I'm too whatever. You know, I don't want the perception ever to be that that is, you know, how I feel about it because it's definitely not. That's why social, I love social is because you get to meet, talk to, engage with do business with people you would never in the ordinary course of life have an opportunity to connect with oh absolutely i mean that's been to me the beauty of it um, is the engagement that you get and for example think, things like today where blab i'm finally getting to meet you you were in colorado a few months ago and we missed each other <laughs> But, um, you know, and the other day, Darren was on and Darren and I have been on Facebook, but we haven't met. So and Darren's going to be a guest next month. So it's really awesome. And it's a great way to take that first step for the know, like and trust is to connect with somebody on social networks and to spend that time engaging with them without. And tell me what you think about this. When you first connect, it's not about selling them. It's really about building that relationship. Would you agree? Wholeheartedly. Um, wholeheartedly. Um, in fact, it's kind of my pet peeve in life is when somebody you know, <laughs> follows me or, you know, friends me on Facebook and they immediately post their business on my profile, you know, on my Facebook profile, for example. And, um, you know, it's, it, you know, I tell people this all the time, we don't walk into somebody's um, home and spray paint our business on their wall. So why, why do we think it's okay to do it on Facebook? It's not okay. So you, you know, I, I, I kind of got snarky with somebody the other day, which isn't me. I don't get snarky usually, <laughs> but um, somebody had said, uh, had reached out to me on Twitter and, and wanted me to buy something. I didn't know them, never seen them before in my life. And, um, and I was like, you know, why don't you try a hi, hello, how are you first? And, and, and then maybe, you know, so it's just, yeah. yeah, absolutely. If you, if you are truly interested in selling your or growing your business, which usually involves selling something, then you have to invest in the relationship and it doesn't start with, um, Hey, here's my business and you need, I've got a 20% off. You need to run over there and buy right now. It doesn't start that way. Well, I talk about that a lot when I'm speaking to groups, you know, it's kind of like the um, networking event where somebody comes up to you and says, hi, my name is Deborah, here's my card, before they even found out your name is Kim, 
Yes. You know, it's like, hi, hi, Kim, who are you? Where do you live? You know, what do you do? Do you have family? You know, getting, taking that time to, I say, when you find, when you are interested in someone, they'll find you interesting. And so I get that, you know, yeah, there's people in particular, I do Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn a lot. I speak a lot about LinkedIn and people will reach out to me on LinkedIn and they won't send me a personalized message. You know, they'll just use LinkedIn's generic connect button and it comes out and says, hi, I want to add you to my network. So I'll respond to them before I accept them. I'll respond and say, how did you connect with me? You know, did somebody refer you? Uh, were you just searching LinkedIn? Let me know. And to me, that's a way to start a conversation. Absolutely. And, um, I, you know, to speak to that point, I, I, I've actually heard, um, Mel, I think it's, I think it's Melody, um, uh, Melanie uh, Dodaro has, which is, she's a LinkedIn uh -huh. expert. And she's like, I wouldn't right. even accept people who use the standard, um, you know, message anymore. She says, that if they don't care enough uh, to, you know, pop in a personal message, then, you know, she just doesn't even accept them, which I, you know, that's, that's a strategy, right? <laughs> well, you know, and I don't, I think that there are people out there, I find this when I speak about it, not everybody knows that they can personalize their invitation. That's if they're on their phone and I don't have my phone in front of me, but if you're on your phone and you connect with somebody on LinkedIn, you're not given that opportunity. It just goes out. Right. So you're right. People, sometimes people don't know. Um, and it's honestly, it's true. Even what I said about, you know, people, um, you know, get on social media. They think it's a magic bullet. They're excited. They connect with somebody new and, oh, hey, here's my business. Sometimes they don't right. realize that it's not proper etiquette. Yes. And, um, you know, there's a couple of people here in the comments um, saying the same thing I just mentioned, that if you're on your phone and LinkedIn in particular, you're not given that opportunity to personalize it. That's why I respond to people and try to engage. Yes. You know, and if they don't respond to me, I think, well, they really didn't want to start a relationship or they're really, maybe they're not using LinkedIn all that much, or they're trying to maybe just build their numbers, you know, and they want to just get more connections. But I want to address something that you wrote in your book. Um, where is it here in the introduction? Excuse me for looking away from the camera, but I'm going to okay. read from this book. <laughs> Kim wrote this. She said, what businesses really need is to build connections that last, connections that transcend a single product or marketing campaign, connections that span an extended period. And listen to this. Successful social media marketing is not built on impressions. It is built on relationships. So that's what I really love because... I'm all about those connections and building those relationships. Well, I think that's the key. You know, uh, I even find that I would even say it's even deeper than that. It's it even transcends even the sale, the initial sale. So, you know, you have to you have it's it's like you know that old saying where you have to um, over, under promise and over deliver. Well, when you sell mm -hmm. something in your business, it needs to be stellar. And, you know, your customer service needs to be stellar. Um, if you're going to have a long-term customer, then you have to continue to serve that customer in some capacity. And I think that it's, it's bigger than even just the initial sale. You, you have to continually uh, put yourself in a place where um, you're continually serving, you're continually leading with value. Um, so that they'll come back the next time they need something from you. You know, it's not just one sale. Right. It, well, it's a relationship, a, a long-term relationship. Right. Which you know, you have not to, like, okay, now you bought my product. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. And, and which is why as business owners, we have to be cognizant of that. We have to, we have to realize that it's not just one sale. It is, it's a relationship that you continually have to foster. So that yes. they will, and you know, online, it's, it's a little more difficult uh, in some ways because you have, you've got to continually deliver great content, continue to serve. Um, you know, if, if somebody buys something from you in a traditional um, brick and mortar store, 
um, you know, they may come in and out, you know, they may come back, they may not, but online you're visible um, all the time. Well, and even a brick and mortar store, you know, if you look at somebody like a Nordstrom's, you know, they really built that business on building relationships. Yes. They don't just let people walk out the door. You know, they stay connected to them. So that connection is really a vital piece. And that's why many of us these days have, you know, um, email service providers so that we can stay in touch on a consistent basis with our people and let them know that we're thinking about them. And like you said, it's not always about sending out an email going, buy my product. You know, it just might be, hey, and that brings me to something that I noticed you offer. I mean, it's 10 Facebook marketing tips with no budget, which, of course, since I talk about millionaire marketing on a shoestring budget, (laughs) um, you want to share. Well, one, why don't you tell people how they can get that from you and then maybe share a tip about Facebook marketing with no budget. Sure. I actually just wrote this uh, blog post this week. I think it was, we, we uh, posted it and um, it's kind of a spinoff of one that I wrote for entrepreneur.com. It was something Mm -hmm. about, you know, marketing your business on a shoestring budget. And it was um, so uh, well received on entrepreneur.com that I thought, well, how much, why don't I, you know, skinny the topic up a little bit and just make it focused on Facebook, which is such a pain point for people right now. You know, everybody's Mm -hmm. struggling to try to get, um, you know, reach and engagement on Facebook. So I thought, well, hey, this is, you know, a lot of people don't have big budgets. Uh, You know, I I personally think we almost have to start um, wrapping our heads around a small ads budget on Facebook, simply, especially if you don't have a connected massive community already. Um, it can be difficult. You know, Facebook is continually making it more and more difficult. When I say small, I mean small. It doesn't take a ton of money to really get great results on Facebook uh, with their ads platform. Five bucks a day, and I think you can do amazing things if, you know, if you have some skills with the with the Facebook ads. Um, but some of the things, you know, that I talk about in this article are, um, you know, graphics, you know, doing quality graphics. Those are free things that we can do. Um, you know, I, I talk about Canva. Um, you know, you can create your, your timeline covers with Canva. You can create, you know, um, uh, memes with Canva. Uh, they're, they're, they have all the sizes there for you already ready. Even your ads um, can be done there um, inside of Canva. So that's technically a free service. I mean, they do have some paid, uh, you know, pieces to it, but, you know, it's very low cost even at that. So, um, you know, people engage and respond so well to visual content. Um, in fact, especially on, uh, I think, Facebook, uh, and, I, and frankly, I think that's one of the reasons that Blab and Periscope and all of the live streaming things are going so crazy is because we are visual. Um, you know, people like to connect, and I think that is one of the things that I, I have found works super well on Facebook is just having great graphics, um, and Canva does allow us to do that. Um I keep freezing, so hopefully I don't freeze with some yeah. awful look on my face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're not freezing right now, but it's interesting that you bring that up because last, you know, two weeks ago I wrote a post that was about five ways to rock your social media graphics. And so I mentioned Canva, and I love on my iPhone, I have Word Swag, which is awesome. And there's Pixlr and there's PicMonkey. So there are great ways to make use of that visual um, tool. Well, let, in me, let me give you a couple more um, that I okay. love. Um, if you like Word Swag, you will love um, a, an app called Typorama. Um, oh, I have to write it down. Typorama. It's similar in a lot of aspects to, um, to Word Swag, except it takes a lot of the um, the things that word swag doesn't do super well, um, to the next level. So things like, um, it has different sizes. You can create graphics for Twitter. You can create graphics, uh, that are poster sized um, with the, cool. with a lot of the, uh, the same functionality that word swag has, which is. So is it an app for the phone or is it something for your desktop? It is for the phone. 
So if you like okay. the swag, you are going to love Typorama. Um, and another one uh, that I recently found, um, oh goodness, I can't look because I'm not, on, I'm on my phone. <laughs> You're on your phone. <laughs> well, send it to me and we can post oh, I know. it later. <laughs> it's legend. That's it. It came to my mind just as I. Uh, oh, is that the video one? Yes. Yes, I've seen Darren using that and I've seen you using it. And so he told me about Legend and I haven't checked it out yet. That it's a short little short little video kind of. Yes, you it basically you pop in your text and it animates your text. So it makes okay. it, you know, and you can put your own photo on it. You can use a, a solid background. They even I think they're connected to um Pixabay as well. Um, okay, but still you can, you know, do some cool things with it. You can even, um, what I've been doing to make mine stand out and a little bit, uh, and make them a little bit more unique is I've been creating two or three graphics. Like maybe I want to say something that's not just, um, uh, you know, a short little blurb, maybe it's, you know, two or three points. So I'll create three, maybe three graphics, and then I'll string them together inside of iMovie. Um, and make like a 15 second, um, you know, video. video that I can use on um, Instagram or Twitter and Twitter as well. Awesome. Oh, okay. Well, there's some great tips there for uh, the visuals and the images. I love that. What I want to do is um, open up the other seats. We have a lot of people on the call today. Um, and if anyone wants to jump on board and ask Kim a question, um, feel free. I will unlock Hold on here, a seat, and um, we've got Valerie. This is Valerie Morris. Valerie's here in Colorado. Let's see. Hi there, Valerie. Hey, Hi. Hi. We've got. Hey. Hi. Um, so I know we talked with Deborah yesterday. Uh, we talked to Deborah yesterday about how, you know how she wrote her book. I'm curious with your book. If you have any tips for, for people that are wanting to either start writing an ebook or start writing a book themselves. Um, one of the things that I learned um, when I was doing my book and one of the things that I think with, is something anybody can do is um, basically pull all of the blog content that you have already wrote around the specific topic that you are going to write your book on. Um, and mm. leverage that as a starting point. Then you can augment, then you can do more research and you're not starting totally from scratch. Um, so I, I think that's, in some cases, you can write an entire book off of your blog content. And I think so many times people are, you know, they, they struggle with, oh my gosh, I got to write all of this content in one fell swoop for a book. When the reality is we have already created a lot of content usually in our businesses. How can you take some of that same content, um, you know, reword it, um, you know, maybe do add research and case studies to it um, and not start literally from scratch. Um, I would say about a good chunk of my book was exactly that where I was able to, you know, incorporate some of stuff that I already had. And then I just augmented it, um, you know, to, to beef up the book. So that would Great. be my best. And, and, you know, honestly, the book writing itself, I thought was the hard part until I got it done. <laughs> I realized that the marketing is actually the hard part. <laughs> That's so, great. Thanks, Kim. Well, don't get wrapped up in trying to be per perfect. I think that's the biggest message I have for you. Um, you know, again, pull, start amassing your content and then um, organizing it because you'll find, I think you'll find that you already probably have a, a base and some bones. Awesome. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Deborah. You're welcome. All right. See ya. Well, and I'll, I'll add to that. Um, when I when I started my book, when I started my book, um, I was like you. I had content, and then I put it all together and went, "Huh, it's not enough content for a book." So then I reached out to colleagues and I started doing interviews with colleagues and asking them, you know, what's your cost-effective way to market yourself? And so then it started to blossom and grew into more content. And um, yes, 
like you said, at some point you go, okay, now that it's done. So we've got someone else here. Let's see, we've got Anthony. I'm going to let you jump on board. Anthony is the founder of the Champion Entrepreneur Mastermind Groups. How are you ladies doing? And the Champion I Entrepreneur Podcast. Hey, Anthony. I'm looking down. No, no problem. I, I wanted to hey bring there, up a topic, Anthony. you guys. Thanks for I'm not sure how long you've been on. but Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you. Can you hear us? Um, I wanted to bring up a topic that you guys were talking about a little bit ago, and this is the concept of connecting with individuals. I'm not sure how long you had been on when you started that conversation. That's when I hopped in. But um, the, the struggle I see is that as we become more and more social media based or platform based in our interactions, we lose this ability or understanding and it's really the humanistic understanding of how to connect with people, how to connect them with them on a human level. How do you guys see that playing out as, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit younger than the two of you in the millennial generation, but the generation, I, that is, that is a compliment. That is a compliment. No, 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 no. Wisdom comes oh, with age. So that is sure. It's getting worse, dude. Be quick. <laughs> As the as more generations come up, though, what we're seeing is that's it. We're gonna cut you off. It's like you know, just keep digging the hole. As as generations come up, though, they're more and more online. You know, it's a younger and younger age that you get a phone. Right, my kids will get phones. They they probably should already have phones, according to the society. They don't, but. That that is we're filtering our relationships through this concept of followers, um, connections, but that means nothing. Well, I, I am of the opinion. Well, you know, I'm sorry. What, go ahead, Deborah. You go ahead. Okay. No, you go first. Okay. Um, my guess. You I go first. Um, think that you're exactly right in a lot of uh, ways. One, one of the, the reasons that my content kind of gets uh, a ding sometimes from other, you know, other social media folks or even other business uh, uh, folks is that I don't focus strictly on business content. Uh, I really do focus on connecting with people on a human to human basis. So I have a mix of content. I have humor. I have, um, you know, inspiration, motivation. Uh, different types of content that I believe to be more relatable uh, to people because I want I want to be um, I, I think true truly good content uh, has to start with relevance and relatability. So um, you know we get so wrapped up in in content for content sake that and even content for business sake that we we forget that a lot of people will connect with us around a human to human uh, or what they care about level before they're going to connect around our product or service. So I'm I'm personally really big on a variety of content so that I do connect with people um, more on a, a human to human level. I mean, people will connect around like my um, humor or my inspiration way before they connect around a social media tip, you know. So I, I, I personally believe my best relationships <laughs> that I have formed on, um, on social media have started around something that's totally not related to my business. Um, yeah. it, so it, it, I, I, just, I do agree. I, I, I agree with you. I, I see this as possibly a new frontier that we need to start pushing into because, because the generations that are coming up, all all they know is you need you're on all these platforms that's how you connect with your people and they they put things out that are not impersonal you were talking about the um, Deborah you were talking about the LinkedIn you know not being personalized in what you're sending and this I think is almost becoming ingrained and in, well I'm just connecting with you this is how we connect but there's no personalness to it there's no building of the relationship, which is really, you know, we're, we're here to build relationships. That's one of the big things we're here to do, but it needs to be personal as we do it. 
And, and I think that's why it's so important to actually talk to people on social media. It's not about just sending out a tweet. It's not just about, you know, posting something on Facebook. It's about engaging with the people who engage back. That's one of the reasons that I push out of my comfort zone for the live streaming uh, stuff that we're doing now is because I actually get that live feedback. I can actually engage and build relationships. I have built amazing relationships leveraging this live streaming, uh, you know, concept, whether it's here on Periscope or whether it's, um, you know, on, I'm sorry, here on Blab or whether it's Periscope or, you know, ultimately, um, because I, again, I think that you get that uh, personal well, you know, and um, I, I just, I, you know, don't forget to talk to people, guys. Don't think you can just tweet, set it, and go. It doesn't work that way. You you really do have to talk to people. You have to uh, engage. You you know when somebody. That's one of the reasons that you know thanking people for retweets has worked so well for me because it's a door opener. All content, in my opinion, is a door opener to a relationship, guys. It's up to you once you put it out and people start engaging with it to open up the door and let them in. Yeah. And the value of the list, in my opinion, is, is the value of the relationships that you've built and not the number of people on it. Amen. And so you have that hundred, a thousand person yes. list, but it doesn't do no good. Uh, the horrible English. It does you no good if you haven't built the list <laughs> that bu is built around relationships, you know, the thank yous and different things. So, yes. Well, I would. Awesome. Well, Anthony, I'm going to open the seat here for somebody else to jump on board. Thank you, ladies, for sharing. Okay, we've got Simon. Sir, nice thank you, Anthony. You. Great to have you here. Good morning, guys. Hi, Kim. Great Hi. to talk with you Simon, again. are you there? I'm sorry, Deborah. I didn't hear what you said. We've got Simon trying to jump up. Okay. I said, are sounds you there? Like the, <laughs> sounds like the audio is stuttering. Uh, Kim, can you can you hear me okay? I on can. My side? We okay, definitely good. Well, seem to be having, there's a delay and there's a lot yeah, of it's reasons odd. going on today. I wonder if maybe it's a blap. I mean, they're working so hard and now there's a lot more people on. So kudos to them. Hey, I'll be brief. I just wanted to toss something out. Kim, one of the things that, that I think I may have told you this one yesterday when we spoke. Really? I mean, there's, you know, there's probably uh, a zillion blabs. I'm sorry, Deborah. I don't want to talk over you, so I'm trying to be careful. I don't know how much delay um, we're experiencing. Hey, I'll try this. Try this one more time, Kim. Um, one of the things that I, one of the things that I respect a great deal about you is that across across several of the different uh, platforms, and I'm not as I, I'm. I started with Twitter, really focused on that, so I could try to learn to be good at it. Haven't branched out as far as I would like to. Of course, it's time consuming. But as I've looked at the people that I respect a great deal, one of the things that I love about you is that you're consistent with the type of voice you have, no matter where you are, however it's handled on that on that platform. But you mentioned earlier that there's a, a percentage, you know, a certain percentage where you you may focus on business, a certain amount of content, like on your Twitter feed. You know, you have you have some quotes, but you you also have a, a, a bit of engagement, and each one has a different feel. Do you find that you have to change the percentage of business as compared to to personal interaction across different formats, like different from Pinterest and Instagram than it is on LinkedIn or or Twitter? Well, most of my engagement um, is pretty uniform. I mean, I get, well, I get more engagement on Twitter. I, and I think that's just purely based on numbers. You know, I have, um, I have about 180,000 Facebook fans, but the engagement there is, is not as deep. And I don't believe it's value based to my business as the ones that I have on Twitter, just based off of you know, what I can see happening, um, you know, not only from the, the conversations, but also from, you know, pure business standpoint. Um, but, you know, I have a lot of amazing conversations on Instagram, uh, tons of amazing conversations now that are actually translating into, you know, you know, sometimes relationships on social media, in my experience, have taken time to cultivate. You know, it takes time to build those relationships and, um, and then Absolutely. ultimately, you know, take that to a, a place where it creates some, um, some business for you or an opportunity, not necessarily just for you to have business, but maybe help them in some way. And sometimes that usually takes, uh, it's, sometimes it's a process. What I'm finding um, on the live streaming apps is that that process is skinnied up dramatically. 
So I, I think it just depends. You know, it's one of the things I keep telling people about, you know, whether, again, if it's here on Blab or if it's Periscope or whatever. Yeah, you have that face-to-face -face connection, which makes it's, the difference. That face-to-face -face connection. I think it builds the know, like, and trust factor at a super accelerated rate. It shortens the time that you would normally spend building and cultivating not only content, um, but the relationship side of it as well on social media. So I, I you know, to get back to your, your question specifically, I, I don't know that the, 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 um, the content or the platform necessarily changes the engagement. Um, I think the, I think the engagement, uh, amount of engagement can be different on every platform, but I, I don't think I really see a different type of um, engagement necessarily from platform to platform. Wonderful. I just wanted to ask you that question. I'll hop off and let somebody else have a space. Great to see you as always. Oh, so nice to see you again. Talk to you soon. Bye, okay. Bye-bye. Yeah. Kim, we have a question here, Kim, um, from Tiffany. And Tiffany said, engaging with the social media community is very time consuming. How do you balance this with actually getting work done and building relationships outside of social media? Well, that is uh, the million dollar question and a great one, by the way. Uh, it, that is a great one. You know, it, it's, it's uh, my husband and I actually had this conversation just the other day. When my kids were still home and they were playing hockey, um, you know, our, our lives, our social lives revolved around their lives, you know, and when they, uh, you know, my oldest is in the military and my youngest is in college. And, um, and when, when they were no longer in, in youth sports and out of the house and we weren't going to practice five nights a week, uh, we realized, oh my gosh, we have no social life. <laughs> <laughs> we, our whole world revolved around their world. And, uh, and so, you know, even on, in social media, I feel like some of my very best friends and my very best relationships are on the other side of this computer screen. So, and, and I, it's not to say that I haven't <laughs> met them or, you know, anything of that nature, but still a lot of my world does revolve um, around the online space. So, and I feel like I, I know some of those people better than I know people in my real, in my real world, you know, but, um, but I do think it is a balance and I think it's important to try to, to have those real connections or it, even if they're real in, in the sense of online, you know, when you get an opportunity yeah. to meet people in real life, invaluable, that takes the net, it takes the relationship to a whole other level. Um, so anytime I get to meet somebody in oh, person, another level, right? Isn't it awesome, Deborah? I can't hear you, sweetie. Are, are you, we lost your hear your sound? Yes, it is. It, like you just said, it brings it to a whole nother than me. Okay. I'm going to jump off and come back on. Okay. Yeah, this. Can you, can you hear me now? I got you now. Nope. Yeah, I think we've all got a couple of poor internet signals here. Um, can you hear me now? I got you now. Oh, well, she's left us. Is anybody else having, I mean, I noticed, I don't know if it's Blab, but I'm just trying to see if anybody's having issues hearing us. I was definitely having issues hearing Deborah. I know I've been freezing. You know, it's so funny when you see yourself on screen and your faces look in this contorted look. You're like, oh my God. There she is. Yeah, I'm back. So for those of you that have issues, sometimes you have to jump off and get back on. Um, some people are saying that you have to um, hardwire your computer instead of using your Wi-Fi. Um, but we've got Erin coming on. If Hopefully Erin is with Socially Powered here in Colorado. And, you know, we all have different Internet connections. Mm -hmm. And some of us are on Wi-Fi. Some of us are on bones so um, makes, thank you simon says there's no problem that makes me feel better that my face is not like and froze that <laughs> <laughs> yeah well mine kind of does <laughs> <laughs>
It brings whole new meaning to your mom um, telling you. But Aaron, to it looks like you're having trouble getting on. You go out and come back in. Are you there? I can't see you or hear you, Erin. So we're going to have you come back in. We're going to try someone else here. Are you there, Kim? I am. Uh-huh. Okay, so let's bring in, we've got Dr. Will Moreland, who's an author and speaker. Let's see if Dr. Will speaks, shows up on our screen. Hey guys, can you hear me and see me? There we go, maybe. I can see Kim. Are you there, Will? I'm here, Deborah. Can you hear me and see me? Yes. Yep, I see you and I can hear you. Kim, can you see and I hear can, him? and I was just going to say you have a great smile. Uh, thank you, Kim. <laughs> you so I have a question. I do. So, did so you have I a hear question? a lot of people, and me included, uh, probably kind of guilty in this. I have a consultant company. And I'm on a lot of the social media platforms, but social media is not really my business. So my question is, how much time should you really devote to social media? Like Kim and Deborah, this is your business. So you're actually getting paid to speak on social media and things like that. But for us that have different types of business, because I get, I mean, I'm on Periscope, I'm on Blab, I love it all, but I have to remember at the end of the day, this is not my main business. Well, I am personally of the opinion that you need to find um, one or two platforms to embrace and dig into um, because there's there's a multitude of, re of, of uh, issues that you are facing, especially if you're brand new to social media. You have the learning curve uh, and then you have the work, you know, which means, you know, social media is free, but it's time consuming. You know, to do it right, it's not really free. It, it sucks down a lot of our time. So, you know, there's content creation, there's engagement, uh, you know, it's, it's time talking to people, you know, if you really want to do it well, and you want to build those relationships, you have to commit to, you know, spending the time to talk to people, which, you know, in order to get people to talk to you, you have to have content. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of like a, a lot of stuff. So I usually recommend that uh, people find um, a couple of one to two platforms where their ideal client or their ideal customer is really dig in and learn those platforms, start getting results on those platforms uh, and then branch out if they want to. Instead of trying to be everywhere and uh, and do it all, ultimately, you you know, you don't do anything well if you try to attack it like that. Um, that is my opinion. I mean, if you have the resources and you have a team and you can do multiple, you know, if you can do three or four or five, six, heck, eight platforms, then then by all means. But don't get started somewhere <laughs> if you don't have the time and resources to do it, because consistency is probably the biggest factor um, or and or determinant of success. Um, and if you know if you can't be consistent somewhere, then no sense in even you know building out a presence there. Because uh, it just makes you, you know, look bad in the long run and you don't get the results you want. So um, find a couple of platforms, dig in, um, learn it, and, you know, start building relationships there. Awesome. And I'll add to that. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, open up your seat, Will, but I'm going to add something to that. Thanks for jumping on board. Um, and what I'm going to add to that is think about where your audience is, you know, and think about where you want to be that you enjoy doing. Because if you don't enjoy doing it, you know, someone told me, well, I don't really like to do Facebook. Well, then don't do it. Because if you don't enjoy it, then it's going to feel like a chore. So I really agree with you, you know, pick one or two that is something you feel you can dedicate your time to and jump in with. And as you get better at it, then you can decide if you want to pick another. Let's see, we've got Socially Powered trying to jump on board again. 
Let's see if we can get her. She's been having trouble getting on here. This is Erin, if we can get you here, Erin, we'll do so. In the meantime, we have a question from Marissa. And that question is, how do you engage with users when for the most part, all they do is retweet? Do you want to touch on that, Kim? Well, you know, it's one of those things that one, if they are retweeting your content, it stands to reason that, you know, they like the content. I mean, that's not always true. Some people will automate their retweets, et cetera. Um, but if you're consistently seeing people retweeting your content, um, reach out to them and thank them, strike up a conversation. And when I say thank guys, let me give you another little tip here. Don't just say, Hey, thank you for the retweet. Um, say thank you for the retweet or, you know, appreciate the retweet or, you know, vary it up, whatever you want to say it, whatever makes sense for you and your, you know, your manners. Um, but also take a look at their profile. Um, you know, pull something out of their bio that, you know, you think is interesting. Uh, ask an open-ended question, uh, maybe as it relates to something you saw in their bio. Or, you know, sometimes I'll say, if it's Monday, I'll say, hey, how was your weekend? Or if it's Friday, you know, hey, you got big plans for your weekend. You know, open the door to a real conversation instead of just saying, hey, thanks for the retweet. Thanks for the retweet. Thanks for the retweet. Um, <laughs> you know, do the, take the extra step so that you can get people to actually talk to you. You'll be stunned at how, one, you'll be stunned because people will start engaging with you. And two, they'll, they're stunned that you actually took the time to engage with them. I'm and when I've done that, if, if like you said, on a Friday, if somebody's retweeted something, I say, thank you. And then I say, do you have anything fun planned? Mm -hmm. you know? And then like, we started out very early in this conversation talking about conversations and engaging. Then they respond back and you have a conversation going. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I have a conversation on Twitter, have had a longstanding conversation with um, a lady in Canada, both of our children. Well, our, my, both of my boys have played hockey. Um, her children are younger and are playing hockey as well. We have, you know, just gone back and forth for years around the fact that our kids play hockey. That's fabulous. And we've got um, Robert. Hey, <laughs> We're looking at Robert's lore. He's got some hey, I'm here. Today. Unfortunately, my camera's a little screwed up, so I'm having a tough time hearing you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. You sound great. I can hear you. And it looks, there you are. You're coming into focus. Okay. I just, I wanted to touch right on something there, that uh, so you do. I mean, you, what Kim had said, you do something, Deborah, that is extremely awesome in, in how you personalize your response back to people that connect with you, how you personalize responses to people that simply like your content, which goes a long way, as Kim mentioned. The other piece that people have mentioned as far as um, how to engage with people, I think mean, a lot of times we're so focused on creating our own content and engaging with people who actually engage with us that we fail to do one other piece, and that's to go check out the content that other people are posting and engage on it. I think some of the most valuable conversations and friendships I've built online have simply because I took the time to work with other people on their content, and that gets them back to my content. So it's not just about what I'm posting, it's about what they're posting and engaging with them in their space. Well, that's a great point. I love that. I'm sorry, Deborah. go ahead. I was just gonna say that's a great point because somebody posted in here, it's Joy. She said, you know, engagement is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can't have a conversation unless you engage, otherwise you're just having a monologue. You're just a broadcaster if you don't if you don't uh, elicit some sort of uh, conversation or start some sort of conversation. But I love what Robert said, um, and I, you know, at, at its root, you, I mean, it's all about them. It's not about you at all. So if you do take that extra step and you, you know, go check out some of their content or you retweet their content or you say something about something you see in their feed even. Um, you know, it shows showcases that you took the time. And I will say something else. Um, one of the things that I do is I always try to use people's names when I respond to them um, because there's nothing more validating than somebody's name. Uh, you know, lots of times people don't use their name in their actual username or their Twitter handle but yet they will, their names are usually um, in their Twitter profile. 
So mm -hmm. I really try to, um, you know, leverage some uh, leverage people's personal names when I respond to them, um, because again, that's a personal connection, and a lot of people don't don't do that. So just kind of giving you guys some of my secret sauce. Yeah. And then, <laughs> well, we appreciate the secret sauce. And the the other piece that I knew Did I you have something you wanted to say, Robert? Something is to retweet and usually add something else to the conversation to help keep it going. It's not just a blind retweet of somebody's content when possible. Love that. Absolutely yeah. agree. You know, if you can say love this or great read or, you know, whatever it is, just so that it's not, it, you know, I almost, you almost get, uh, what is it? I'm, I want to say banner blindness. Uh, you know, to just a standard, I know it's not the right term, but maybe it's retweet blindness um, because you see so many retweets. But yet if you see a retweet where there's a personal comment where somebody's, you know, adding some kudos to it in some way, um, I'm more likely to pay attention to that simply because somebody has said something positive in relation to and in conjunction with the retweet. So that's a great comment, Robert. I love that. That's Thank a, you. a huge value add. Thanks for jumping in, Robert. I appreciate yeah, it. Um, we've got, um, we're, yeah, definitely. Yes. Well, you know, Robert's another one of those people who I've known for some time, but we haven't met yet. And we engage a lot on social networks. So it's awesome to meet yeah, you. And, um, and I look forward to the day to meet you both in person. Sounds good. I'll jump up with somebody else. I'm going to take it. Robert. I'm nice to meet you, Robert. Thanks. You too, we've Kim. Got, Thank you. Sure. Bye, Robert. Thanks for coming on board. We've got um, Jed. Do you know Jed Record? Oh, I do know I Jed. Do. Yes. Hey, Yay. I've you? never met Jed, but we Jed. talked and chatted it up. Hey, Jed, are you yes, in Boston? Yes, we're in Boston right now. Here's with a friend of mine uh, that some people might know. That's yeah. Vincenzo Landino. <laughs> Vincenzo. Oh, yeah. hey. and Deborah. Hi, Kim and Deborah. Yeah. Hey. Hi, hey, guys. Vincenzo, I know of you, but I don't know you. <laughs> Say hi to Joel when you see That's him. right. Yeah, we just got through seeing uh, Joel host a live blab in his talk here. Um, so that was great. Right on stage. I was supposed to pop on that. Oh, poo. Uh, well, tell you what, Kim, <laughs> next week, maybe we can do something similar. We'll do uh, um, something over there. I'd love to. I can't wait to see you next week. Definitely. Sounds like a plan. Let's plan that. That was good. Which, you know, that sounds like perfect timing then for Kim, for you to tell everybody about your event, Social Boom, because I'm assuming that's the event you're that's talking about. That's absolutely right. I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it from inbound to Social Boom. So we've been we're spreading the word here and looking forward to seeing Kim and all the crew there. Well, it's going to be a fun time. We do have the, the event awesome. is um, it starts next Friday evening and uh, runs Saturday and Sunday. Um, our focus, we have some amazing speakers coming in from literally all over the world. Our focus is um, true strategy based though, strategy um, that is going to drive sales ultimately. Your that's business. right that's so right it's going to be a fun time if you don't have your ticket you have to get we still got a few seats not you many, can still though. get tickets I mean, we have got a crowd coming so it's going to be fun and, and i just talked yeah. with... it's in chicago isn't it it's in chicago yes so chicago um social boom 2015 and uh it will be the 18th 19th and 20th and there's a link right there in the room. Uh, thank you, Deborah. Oh, Deborah, you just put that in there. Oh, good for you. Um, <laughs> and I just talked to, to Sue B. Zimmerman, uh, the Instagram expert, for those who don't know her, but everybody already knows her. And she is sharing some awesome tips next weekend. And I cannot wait to, to get in on, on her, sh on her uh, session. She's a lot yeah, she's yeah. one I haven't connected with yet, so I will have to do that because I see all your signs behind you, Kim, and those probably came from Sue, didn't they? They did, yes. Her um, her source is my source, yes. <laughs> well, that I just wanted to pop in and say hi to both of you, and, and Deborah, thanks so much for hosting this blab. 
Uh, well, I think it's great. We've been, we've been listening in here on the sofas here at Inbound, and we've really enjoyed it. So thank you, and we'll see you all soon. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much, Dad. So nice Bye. to see you. I'll see you next weekend. Yeah. We've got time for um, one more person who's been waiting online, so I want to bring him in. And then I think we need to wrap it up. I don't want to take up all of your time, Kim. But we have Kyle. Kyle Murray's been waiting here. Hi there, Kyle. Oh, it's okay. I, I don't mind the wait. This has been really great. It's a lot of really great information. So thanks for having me on. And where, where, are you, where, are you, where are you located? Uh, I am in Los Angeles, specifically uh, in the neighborhood of Silver Lake. And did you have a question for Kim? Yes. So this, so here's the thing. I've been running uh, social media for a home healthcare company that's been run by my parents. Uh, I've been doing that since April, and I basically built it from nothing. Um, I built that all the way up to about, I mean, it's not huge, but it's a respectable number, about 700 on Twitter, um, and then about 700 on Facebook as well. We started our own Facebook or uh, our own Twitter chat. That's brought a lot of information for caregivers and people trying to figure out how to do home care. Um, we had our first chat on Wednesday where we like quadrupled our normal web traffic visits. Um, the thing is, is I through LinkedIn, I had a company contact me that wants to bring me on as their social media manager. Um, and I have an interview with them on Monday. It's a private health company in Beverly Hills. It's a huge opportunity. And my question is, you know, I've built this other company or my parents' company up from nothing. This is going to be more of a business to business kind of approach. And the specific email they sent me was like, what would you start off doing? And so I guess what I'm saying is like with my other company, it was more of just running Facebook ads uh, and trying to connect with local businesses and organizations in North Carolina. Um, but for them, they have zero social media presence. They have 11 likes on Facebook, which includes me, um, and then no Twitter account. So I have to start from nothing. Well, I, I think you have to assess what their goals are long term. I actually, not just long term, but long and short uh, term. Uh, short term, obviously, you know, is, is kind of the first elephant in the room. Right. Uh, but I think it starts there. I mean, that's what we, for any client that we um, we work with, we start with, what do you want from social media? You know, so many businesses, um, you know, their their first answer is, well, we just want more business. You they know? want more clients, um, right. Right, or more clients or, you know, whatever, more leads. Um, but, but the reality is they don't quantify it. Uh, they don't put timelines on it. Um, you know, so we basically try to come in and say, okay, what are your goals? Not just more business, uh, more leads, more, you know, um, whatever. Um, what do you want? And in what timeline do you want, want it? And then, you know, what strategies can we put into place based on what your budget is uh, right. or what your resources are uh, to make those things happen? Um, you know, social media is not a magic bullet for, no. for business owners. And so I think lots of times they think it will be, and they won't devote the time and, or what's necessary to make it happen. Yeah. So I think as you get started, your biggest problem and what I would really encourage you to do is set expectations out the gate. Um, you know, expectations of this is going to take time, guys. This right, is not, exactly. you can't just plop down on social media and expect to get amazing. We're going to get like a thousand followers. No, no. I mean, that's, that's a right. really good point. Cause that's what, uh, I did with our company is that it's been gradual, but I think the reason why it's grown is because I, I mentioned in the chat and I think it's been mentioned with some of the people that have been on, uh, is that if you do go out there and genuinely connect with people, like I write, for the Twitter chat, I personally invited 100 people to it. I wrote them an individual message based on who they are. Uh, we had people who connected with us in April, and I was like, you were one of our first connections. We really appreciate you contributing you know, to our online presence, and we love what you post. We'd love to have you on. Uh, and we were able to get them on the chat. So you're making a great point. I really need to bring that up. Like, You're not going to get this instant success, but I right. promise you that if you know, I invest the time that I think it's going to take, it's well going to be worth it because the people you do bring on, the people you do connect with are going to be genuine connections. They're not just going to be a bunch of endless numbers that don't 
like you know your page and uh what i'm looking at is they have one main competitor uh they're based out of sacramento but they're also in los angeles and they have about 2200 followers on facebook and they have about the same number on twitter um and so basically what i think what i'm going to do is just like okay this took you know their twitter page has been up since 2011. so they've had they have a four-year head start on you um so you can't expect to just be like we're going to compete with them next week so yeah. Setting I guess I just patients is the first thing. And then, uh, you know, figuring out uh, what resources they have or what resources more specifically you are going to have, um, you know, what their goals are. Um, and then, you know, developing some core strategies. I mean, it may not make sense for them to be everywhere. You may want to make, you know, you may want to start with Facebook or you may want to say, okay, we're well, going to do Facebook and Twitter or, you know, maybe Instagram. I think it's going to depend on, again, what, uh, it, there's so much that so much that goes on before you actually start doing the work uh, because and yet I will say this um, social media is the first marketing method that I have ever 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 seen where people come at it with no plan um, yes. I mean like, if you're going to uh, you know do doorknob holders for example you know you print up you you come up with your your marketing message you you print them off, you, okay, I'm going to do this zip code, for example. Uh, and yet when it comes to social media, people just throw stuff at the wall and hope something sticks. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think you're going to have to lay the groundwork expectations. What are your goals? Um, you know, what kind of resources am I going to have at my fingertips or what kind of resources can I, uh, can we hire to make stuff happen? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, you know, that's your first uh, thing. And if you go in organized with that kind of stuff where they haven't thought of that kind of stuff, yeah. you, you will absolutely showcase your, your expertise, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, a lot of what you said is what I was thinking already. I'm just glad to hear you say that because uh, I, I think it's just, you know, I have to kind of put my foot down about certain things and say like, you know, this is the way it's going to go. There's no, again, as you said, no magic bullet. There's no one way to do things other than I think the core principle is you just give genuine engagement that like every connection that you make, you need to make it really personal to them and they will want to engage with you. It's not just so much like uh, there, there is another competitor, but basically it's like they have 150 something on Twitter and Facebook. And it seems like an intern who has Hootsuite and they just drop articles and there's no engagement. So really we just have that one company, but I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that and uh, I'll have to really write that down and remember it. Okay, well, I'm glad so, I was able to help. Yeah, thank you. I, I yeah, appreciate you having me that. on. Uh, I actually need to get going as well. Thank you, okay. I appreciate that. Okay. Thanks, Kyle. So Kim, we have one more person who has a question. Do you want to stay on or do you want to Wrap it up. Actually, well, we have two I'm, more people. Yeah, How's your I'm time? Much, I'm, I'm, you know, kind of about 15 minutes over my timeline here, but okay. let's take one more person and um, and we'll we'll try to be quick. Okay, so I we'll make it quick. We've got Jason Horton here. Hi, so Jason. how are you? Thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, in fact, I'm the next town over from Kyle, who was just on before, which is kind of crazy. Talked to a lot of people on here, and then I'm like, oh, well, you are in the next town over in Los Angeles. Um, but I mean, you know, talking about being authentic, uh, you know, I, I, I just finished doing a, uh, uh, I'm a YouTube person, so I kind of sell this, <laughs> this thing is, 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 is my marketing. And I, you know, I worked with a, a rum company, and I just did like a blog post. Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, and kind of uh, covered that, I think, were all the things. And, um, you know, being authentic is, is amazing because when you have an audience that is like, oh, we don't like it when you promote yourself. And, you know, I've grown my social by not promoting myself, by just sharing cool stuff and other people's cool stuff. And nobody wants to subscribe to a commercial uh, after a while if you're not giving anything out. But I, you know, I realized that like, well, the messaging needs to be, uh, the messaging needs to be there from the company because they have their disclaimers and disclosures, hashtag ad and all that. But you still want to, 
it be coming from you. So I, I really, you know, sometimes I'm at a crossroads between the corporation and then you as the individual and, and kind of being authentic to what you normally do and uh, kind of trying try to find that balance is something that I, I sometimes come at a, a crossroads of. And sometimes I'm like, well, what's the first thing that I think is funny and interesting? And I'll go with that. And then I wonder, well, is that is that gonna you know make the the company mad and they're not gonna want to work with me again? If that happens, that's totally fine. But I feel like with being authentic, sometimes you're at this crossroads of like, well, you also want to you know get that paycheck. Well, so do you have a question? Yeah, I mean, you, like, Jason? like how <laughs> like when you work with someone and you're essentially selling something to an audience, or you have you know your people, whoever's at the other side of it, um, how do you? How, how do you find the balance of like, I say selling out, I know it's not really that, but kind of like having it be your voice, but also trying to match the product. Do you, do you, ever, like, do you feel like if you little go off a little bit of what you do is kind of worth it? Or do you just kind of push forward and be like, this is, this is what I have to say about this. Hopefully it fits enough that it's, it's worthwhile or, or do you just kind of, kind of sell out and just kind of do what they want? No, you don't sell out. Okay. <laughs> No, um, and, you know, in fact, I'm uh, a, a big proponent of just being who you are and realizing that I'm not going to please everybody. Um, there's going to be people who are going to love you. There's going to be people who are, are going to hate you. And sometimes there's going to be people in the between. So, um, but from a, from a uh, customer standpoint, you know, if you bring, you know, if you're doing brand work or if you are doing um you know a customer hires you to be a brand ambassador mm -hmm. or they want you to review a product um you know i i mean you're you're hurting your credibility mm -hmm. not theirs if you don't be if you're not factual about it so i mean that's one of the th reasons that people hire uh people to do uh reviews is they're wanting an honest review I mean, they, they may not like the negative stuff, but they grow and they learn from the, the negative as much as they do the positive. So, um, you know, ultimately, I, and, and frankly, I think sometimes the negative, um, you know, there's a way to balance saying something nas negative, not nasty. That's not the word I was looking for. Um, you can say, um, you know, negative things in a nice way. You know, I always, if I have something negative to say, I usually couch it with saying the positive on the front side. You know, so I'll say, oh, I love this. Like if I'm doing a web page review, for example, for someone or their social media presence, because the reality is we work so hard on our, our companies and our products and our services. And when somebody dings them, it's hurtful, <laughs> you know, because you're like, I really put a lot of time and effort into that. Um, but, um, you know, you can, I think, say something a negative by, you know, saying the leading with the positive right. and that saying, well, this, you know, might be better if it was this way. In other words, you know, say it's not exactly what it should be, um, and it could be better if if it was, you know, whatever your opinion is right. of it. So I, I, I would encourage you not to sell out. Right, yeah. Um, I don't want I, – I think I just got very – I just did – you know, when you post a lot of stuff that you hold very, very sacred, like my Instagram, I've never even – touched for promotion. So it took a lot of that out of me emotionally. And then I look at it again. I was like, Oh, do I seem so fake? Or does it seem like me? So I think, I think I, I just needed some positive reinforcement and you have probably way more experience than I do. So it, it, I find it. You just need to be true yeah. to yourself. You, you gotta you know? be you and just realize that, you know, you, you're just not going to please everybody. Yeah. And, and it's okay. You know, if somebody unfollows you or unsubscribes for your, from your email list, guys, they are not your ideal client mm -hmm. or your ideal uh -huh. customer. Let them go. You know, don't agonize over it. Don't worry because, oh my gosh, so-and-so doesn't like me. I understand because it's hard, but the reality is that they are, they don't, you know, they're not connecting with right. your message. They're not going to be your ideal client. Um, you know, you've got other people to serve. Move on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. I, it was very, very sure. helpful. Sure. Thank you, Jason. You know, and that's a great point. I used to get really upset when somebody opted out of my list. Yeah. And now I'm like, you know what? It's okay. If you don't want to be there, then I don't want to force my message on you. So, Kim, thank you so much for being here today. We've had an awesome audience, lots of people jumping in. We had Vivica, the LinkedIn expert on here, and Phyllis Kerr was here, and um, Jed, <laughs> Jed popping in from Boston. But before we go, tell people how they can get your book. Sure. You can and tell them once more about your event. 
and how they can reach you? Probably the easiest way to get my book is on Amazon. Uh, you can go over the, the name of the book is Will the Real You Please Stand Up? show up, be authentic and prosper in social media. It's basically about, it's silly that you have to tell people that they have to be themselves, but that's truly what it's all about. It's about building an authentic presence on social media so that you can have a no like and trust factor that drives the sales. Um, and um, as far as the event is concerned, uh, like I say, we have some amazing speakers. We're gonna have a blast. Um, we last year we had an Irish jig, a rap um, um, song, let's see, a conga dance. But at the root of it, even though we have all those fun things, uh, we are about uh, driving um, and business for people. You know, we're about you know sharing strategies that are going to make a difference for people. So um, very invested in shortening the learning curve uh, and and sharing things that that work. Um, so it's going to be in Chicago, uh, 18, 19, uh, 20 September. You can find information about it at Social Boom Event. We only have a few tickets left though, guys. So if you're interested and you can make it, you want to come join us. So we're going to have a great time. <laughs> and Vivica says there will be dancing and singing. No one said it will be good dancing and singing, but the content will be exactly. awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, this year is uh, Vivica wasn't with us last year, but she is going to bring a lot of fun with her. Yes. <laughs> I bet she will. <laughs> well, thank you again, Kim. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here with us today. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Next Friday, my guest will be Brian G. Johnson. He's the author of Trust Funnel. So tune in on September 18th for Brian. He's a poodle wrangler, and he's an awesome guy. So thank you again, Kim. Have a fabulous day, and thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, in. Deborah. It was an honor to be here with you, and so nice to see you face to face. Oh, the honor and the pleasure was mine. All right, take care, guys. Thank you all for joining us. Bye-bye.